All right, so welcome to uh, Light Painting Brushes Live, uh, July edition. Um, again, we're doing this one early, um, early for us uh, over here stateside, but we wanted the opportunity to to uh, see some our some you know our friends overseas and in the UK there and in Europe. So um, again, this is welcome to Light Painting Brushes Live in uh, July. Um, this evening we've got Christina with us, Johnny. Um, Jason Page was going to be here, but he had he had something come up that he needed to attend to, so um, he won't be joining us this evening. But we'll go ahead and get started. So, first off, Christina, how you doing? I'm great. Thank you for inviting me to come speak today. That I'm it, I'm excited to share what I do. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited too because that uh, the image that we picked out for the image breakdown is just absolutely phenomenal so uh, it's a it's a pleasure to have you back again um so with that you know first off would you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you sure um well um i'm christina salinas and uh, i've been light painting for gosh well i did a little bit in college and this was back in like you know, the 90s <laughs> and uh, 80s, late 80s, early 90s um, when I was in college. But back then, all I had was flashlights. And um, so it's kind of lost. After that, I, you know, I started, I'm a teacher. I've been, I've been, well, first, before I was a teacher, I worked as a professional photographer for about 10 years. Um, uh, doing, you know, like weddings and portraits and working. I like managed a, a photography studio and quite a few different ones. And then after that, um, I decided that I wanted to get into teaching. Kind of was always in the back of my mind, something I wanted to do. And, um, but it wasn't the right time when I graduated in like 93 from college, 92, 92. Uh, and it wasn't really the right time at that time. So I worked for about 10 years and then when I was like 30, I 99 was my first time, my first year teaching in 1999. Uh, I started working at Del Mar High School in San Jose, and I've been there ever since. Awesome, awesome. So I'm going on 24 years this year being a, a high school uh, teacher, teaching uh, digital photography, video production, and also I teach 3D arts, which is like a sculpture class. So I teach all of those three classes. I also do IB art. We're an IB school. Um, and so, you know, I started teaching photo, digital photo about 10 years ago. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. Um, and started the program there. And I, you know, I started going, you know what? I, I really, I love those. Im I really want to get back into doing light painting, you know, like I, what I did in college. And so I started researching and I found lightpaintingphotography.com right. and Jason yeah. Page. And I've ever since then, it's it's like that was like a life changing moment for sure. That's all I'm gonna say. Um because <laughs> I'm like I started I looked at all the different artwork, all the videos. I saw I saw that he started selling tools like painting brush tools. Uh, and then also Patrick Rochon and his light blades. And um, those are like probably the two products that I use the most in my in my art. And, um, you know, I have like pretty much every tool that <laughs> he sells. Um, and I just, I just love it. This is, it's like, and I teach it to my students. So uh, the last, I probably started doing light painting with the kids about eight or nine years ago. And so when you are a teacher, you, you, you learn everything you can, you know? So like for so long, I was just try trying every technique possible, like just doing it all, like learning it all, like trying to practice all the different techniques so I could teach it to my students. And, um, but over time I started doing I started using the blades more to create forms. Like uh, I call them my creative spirits. 
And um, at first I used my husband. Well, he would complain a lot. He's, he'd be standing there. I said, well, just turn your back to me. I just need your form. So you could be on your phone while I'm using your body here to like, you know, like for uh, spatial awareness and blade placement and all that. But he would be complaining the whole time, practically. Like, I'm cold. I'm like, okay, okay, I'll make this fast, whatever. So I'm like, you know what, this is not working. And, and, and you know, trying to find people sometimes is kind of difficult, right? Like to like be your model. So I'm like, you know what, I just need to make a model. Right. And um, I could have bought a mannequin, but you know, I just felt limited by that. I wanted to do different, I wanted to do different shapes. Um, so do, would you like me to share my screen at this time or? Yeah, uh, if you want to go ahead and share your screen um, and, and pull up the image, we'll be breaking down. That'd be fantastic. Okay. Um, if not, I got it pulled up and ready for you, so. Well, I have like, um, I think I'll share because then I can like just do it like in order of like how I want to talk about it. Okay. Um, can you guys see that okay? Yeah. Okay. So this is the this is uh, one of the forms that I made, and it's made out of um, map board, basically. You guys can see this, okay? Right? Yeah, no absolutely. Problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Um, and it's like you know, like you want to have hair flying or something, or you want to have certain arm positions or like body like shapes, and like trying to get someone to do that, like and hold it for a long time, is really difficult. So. I thought, well, let's make it out of map board and let's use a stand, a light stand to hold it up. Um, and so this is the one that I did for the Yosemite uh, trip that I recently did. This is what you want me to talk about, right, Jason? Absolutely, yes. yes <laughs> okay, yes. okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm hoping this is the image you meant, right? Um, and um, oh, I thought so we were doing a, the spiral. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're good. Okay. And so um, I brought the head piece. You guys can kind of see it here. And you'll notice that there's paint on it and it's actually UV paint. So UV light, and I'm using a UV flashlight um, to get the, the face, to get it so that it's like, I want consistency. So as a teacher, you're constantly breaking stuff down to the most simplest form so that you can teach it to your kids so that they'll get it. So that's just how my mind works, okay? So it's like, okay, how can I, I wanna make sure I have like the same amount of light and I wanna do, I wanna make sure I can put the blade in the same place each time so that I get the same consistent results, right? So uh, I, you can, what's great about this is you can make any kind of shape you want, right? You, you there, this, your, imagine, your imagination is basically, um, you know, you, you're driving force there and you can do whatever shape you want. It doesn't even have to be a figure, you know what I mean? Right. So let's see, let's go here. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next next one here. Um, here, how do I move on to this? <laughs> I'm like trying to move on and it's not letting me move on. Um, okay, I I'm gonna, it. here, I'm going to close that. That'll make it easier. Yeah, close, close okay. it yeah, close yeah, it yeah there we go. Let me share your screen. I, yeah, because, all right, so then here's my form with the, the UV light on it. And so, like, I know how many seconds I need to expose it for. Uh, remember, this is a long exposure, right? We have, I have my cameras on the tripod. I have, I probably have my ISO set to about 100. My f-stop is, I think, was on 10. And um, so I just put the UV light up and down. And the purple part didn't show up as much as the green did. Um, and then um, let me see here. I'm going to go on to the next one. And then um, these were the tools I used. So I used um, two leaf blades. You guys can see that OK? Uh, two leaf blades and with two different value tones. So I did like a darker green and then kind of like a yellowy green. And then I did a blue unicorn blade and a kind of a teal blue 
unicorn blade and then I did the glitter stick with blue and then I had some I brought some um hooded gels too and then here's my UV flashlight down here and and then I'll move on to the next so what I did is after I set it up in the studio is I practiced this a lot and I I, you know, I, I, this is not necessarily how it started out. Like I may not have had as many leaves or I, you know, I, maybe I didn't initially, I did it with just green up here and I didn't necessarily put in some of the, the yellow green. Um, but what I did was I practiced it. I can't tell you how many times, probably, you know, 10 to 15 times before I finally go, okay, yeah, this is the one I want. This is what I'm going to do. Um, and so like I started with the leaf blade. I start always at the same place. So I start here at the bust line and then I went all the way down. I did the, 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 the yellow green and then I did the regular green and then I did the arms and then off of the arms and then I did up the head. Um, but first, before I do any of the blade work, I always, put the UV light first. Um, and then I then I switched to the unicorn blade, which is the blue. And um, I did blue until, and you can see a little bit of the purple coming through from the UV light. And then I did um, the glitter stick coming from on the sides and kind of going in the front. You know, for for me, what's so cool about this is I've followed your work and I've seen the things that you've created for some time now. And to see you take, you know, something that you've you've done and turn it into something else um, was a pleasant surprise. Like when I saw this image, the first time I was like, wow, like this is total. This is so awesome and so beautiful. And it it's so different than the other things that you've been creating. Um, same process, but you took it a step further and just created something that just I was blown away when I saw this. It was just, it's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then here is my technical specs for that. Um, so yeah, so F10, this particular exposure was 353 seconds, um, ISO 124 millimeter lens with Canon 7D. Um, so that's the technical part of that. And I also have kind of a detailed shot of it. I thought I would show you so you can kind of see up close what it looks like. And okay. And so now um, I did it. I did this shot in Yosemite. Here's me. <laughs> When you see this view, this is called the tunnel view in um, Yosemite. You, when you literally come, I've, I've, I've been to Yosemite a lot over the years. It's like about four hours from where I live. and But it has been literally a good, I would say six, 16 years since I've been there. I, I, I never wait that long again, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, like like 16 years ago, my husband and I, we climbed Half Dome. We, like, I literally have climbed Half Dome twice um and that was like kind of a goal that we did back then and like but then I had like my daughter and just life and all that and so I hadn't been there so my friend Kat and I went to Yosemite and we decided well the first day I'm just going to be doing location scouting that's all I'm doing I'm just driving all around and when I saw the tunnel view I'm like okay I know I want to do it here but we're talking like 100 people right a hundred people all looking at this view. And I'm like, oh, shit. Um, I'm hoping there won't be this many people there at like nine o'clock at night was when I when I actually did the 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 artwork there. And and so it's like, I don't know, it's like eight thirty. I got there about eight o'clock, got everything set up like around eight fifteen, eight thirty was when the sun set. Um, and there's still at least 50 people there. 
I'm like, oh my God, there's so many people. So I'm like, um, so what I, what I did was I saw, I set up between, there was like these two signs that kind of tell you information about the location. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna set up in between these two signs. I'm gonna put the form up, which is what I did here. So um, let me come back over here and close this. And then, all right, so I put it up and there's still like, you know, this was like earlier before, before the sunset. And I'm like, hey folks, I'm an artist. I'm going to be doing this artwork here. Um, can you please not, I have it framed from here to here. Can you please not go in my shot, you know, and like just being polite, right? Um, and asking people not to get in my shot. So at like around nine o'clock at night, well, people are still there and well, you know, cause everyone's setting up cause it's like a new moon and everyone wanted to do like astrophotography and that's cool, I get it. So I'm like, do you mind if you like, don't put your tripod here between here and here. And and then, so then I start doing my shots and everyone's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, trying to focus, but you know, I was able to focus enough to get the <laughs> shots in. And I'm just explaining, okay, well, I'm a light painter and this is what I do. And they're like, oh, can I follow you? I'm like, yeah, go to Christina the Light Painter uh, on Instagram. You can follow me. My friend is my friend Kat saw, like, yeah, here's her, here's her Instagram. And you can and he's she's like showing my work and like just just educating people like what I'm doing because you know, like I obviously I don't want someone to, to go with their bright phone right up to the wall here and get it, their bright phone in my shot, right? Cause like people were coming with their phones trying to take astrophotography and like, okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> um, so um, anyway, so it's like nine o'clock and I did it, you know, probably like around that time. It was just twilight, it's just twilight. There was enough, it was dark enough, uh, but there was still enough light and, um, I had to do, I had like a window of like 10 to 15 minutes basically to do it, right? So here's the shot, um, the final shot. And um, as I'm doing the shot, I mean, this is a parking lot. So cars are driving in and luckily the headlights weren't interfering with anything. But when they would turn their car and go up into the parking lot, their red tail lights were like, were like bouncing off this wall. And so that's why it's red, because you can see like the red tail lights bouncing off that wall. And I'm just praying, oh, please let my shot not be ruined. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it, it was OK. So. Um, so this one was probably my second shot that I did. Uh, I did one that, that wasn't I didn't like it as much. I did this one and I did another one afterwards. and didn't like it as much it was a little too dark so I probably got like three shots total um so I, by practicing this at home and really understanding what I'm gonna do um helps to not have to think so much you know like if you go on location with something for the first time and then you're trying to practice it and do the shot at the same time it, it it doesn't I find it doesn't work as well um, I mean, I, I mean, sure, I like to be spontaneous too sometimes, but for this kind of shot where I had, I know like I am only going to be here for like maybe one or two days and I know I want to get, I only have like a limited amount of time to be able to get it done. I know that I better know what I'm doing first before I get there. Um, so then the next night, oh, also let me just kind of talk a little about feeling when I was there. So when you're there and you're seeing these, these ancient monuments uh, of time, um, I mean, it's really, it takes you, uh, it's very um, emotional in some ways. Like it, you're there and you just see like this, they're so ancient and it has this very, very powerful kind of strong feeling. Um, when you're there, it, it, it's a different kind of feeling than the next night when I went down to the Merced River. The next night I went down to the Merced River and I was completely alone. There was nobody there. And it was just me and my, my, my buddy. 
And um, I had been, I had location shot, um, scouting, I'm sorry, location scouting too, but um, this one I actually didn't find on the first day when I was out. It was like the second. So this was like the, I did this, the first shot I did on a Monday and then the second shot I did on a Tuesday. And so Tuesday afternoon, I was like, you know what? I want to stop at this one location and just check it out. And so we did. And I found this little pool of water with some bushes in the background and then some trees. And then we have cathedral rock in the background. And, and I'm like, you know what? This is, I could just, this is the spot. I could, I just knew right away. And the feeling that I had here was more of like serenity and peace. And it was a much more feminine nature, um, feminine feeling that I got from this location than I did last night. I feel like the, the night before it was more masculine feeling. Um, and then, so I set up the form. So I took a picture of it, you can see. At this time I took the bottom part off because I, there was some water and I just didn't wanna worry about like water splashing up or something on it. Um, and then, close that out. Um, and then I, let's see here, let's close that out. And let's, I just totally closed out my stuff. Let's go back in. Um, Welcome to live. <laughs> it's okay. Here we go, here we go, here's my, page. okay. Um, there we go. And so I, I wanted some reflection in the water. Um, because for me, it felt like it was more, con I was connecting more to the environment with it, reflecting in the water. It, um, so I wanted that kind of feel, like the first night was like more about, okay, this, these ancient monuments in the background that are just iconic for Yosemite. And like the feeling I wanted for the next night, I wanted it to be more just, uh, to show more nature and more of the connection and just the water flowing um, of the Merced River. So, um, so I did this one there and I think this one was also like my second shot, I think, second or third, I can't remember. So yeah, um, any more questions, any questions or? Yeah, that I mean, this is fantastic, and like I said, this uh, this creation that you're doing, um, I'd love to see a whole series of this. Just it's it's so beautiful and intricate, and just it's it's new, it's fun, it's it's so beautiful, especially the the color combos. Um, I do have a question about the face, though. You said um, that's UV, like it's a UV paint. It's so, UV paint, and then I use a UV. So you're using a UV light to enhance or pull that paint out in, in during the exposure, right? Yeah, because it has that way you get the same silhouette every time. Right. Okay, I see. Yeah. You, you, you put the same amount of light on it and you're going to get the same consistent silhouette. Gotcha. Christina, come off the screen share so we can see what you were holding up. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, so yeah, so here is here the, this is the face that I used, and you can see like the the kind of the hair flying, and um, so by using the UV light on this, it gets the same consistent silhouette. Um, it, every it blows time. me away how how uh, how well that that comes up in, in a photograph. You know what I mean? I never would have thought that before. Um, I don't know if you guys can. But yeah, I mean, because in your image, you, you did pop. Um, it, uh, I, you know, people will use UV paint on the body. And I, I saw a bunch of light painting with just body paint, you know, just the UV uh, paint on the body. And I'm like, you know what? I should try that on the forms, right. you know, like just paint it on the forms and like, I'm working on one now that is gonna be kind of Hawaiian themed because my daughter is Polynesian. And um, so I thought, well, I'm gonna do something dedicated to her. And um, 
I'm gonna do like a Polynesian tattoo designs on the face and stuff. And um, so I'm working on that one right now. It's giving me a little bit of a challenge. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna say, I've like done so, I've done like a lot of practice and I'm not happy. So I'm, I'm not, I'm working on that one. All right. Uh, can I ask Christina, is it yeah. UV paint or is it UV makeup paint? Do you know if it's a difference? It's actually paint. Okay, cool. Yeah, like a, it's kind of, it's kind of an acrylic based paint, I think, um, that I used on that. Um, and one thing I found out was it doesn't really work very well with the, a red light. So if you're putting like a red light into it, mm, it makes it go white. Hmm. Okay. It's, so I'm like, eh. So I have to go more with like, if I'm going to use red in the image, it would have to be like way further away from the actual paint, the UV part. Um, so I'm that's so lately, so I've been using more blues and purples and so more cool tones. It seems to work better with the cool tones. Um, and like, um, I just did one with this. Here's the little head. Um, kind of hard to show it, but here's the body and with the, the knot work. Right. Um, and so this, the, the white kind of shows up blue. So when you put the UV light on it, it looks blue. Mm. Um, Christina, uh, can, I, can I just ask, how, how big is your, the actual form? I mean, first of all, let me say, the, the shots of the form in the environment are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely. Um, um, but how, how big is the actual form, you know, full, full height? Um, the form is life size. It's and, and bigger. I like to even be bigger than life size. Um, like the longer, the more just, yeah. And then it's a ju just a position, you know, between the, I call it a blade guide and your environment. And you're, I'm always looking at, okay, um, I want the figure to be a certain size, but then I have to think about perspective of like, for example, in Yosemite at the uh, tunnel view, those like Half Dome and El Capitan and Vernal Fall, um, sorry, Bridalveil Falls were so far in the distance that I could have that perspective with the figure and the objects being in the distance. Mm -hmm. Um, cause you don't want, I don't want my form to get lost in nature, but also want to emphasize nature. So it's all about like your, your composition in how you, you know, arrange it and using like the rule of thirds or maybe want it in the center or, you know. Do you, do you have to wait the light stand down? Cause obviously that would, it would be quite, well, you know, any question. slight breeze would, would, would um, grab yeah. the whole thing. Wind can sometimes be my worst enemy. Yeah, um, I do have like a little, <laughs> I, do have like, I do have like a little sand way I bag weight thing that I can use. Mm -hmm. um, also I've used rocks, whatever I can find like, yeah, to weight it down a little bit. Uh, I've used tape sometimes. So I think um, it forms actually clamped onto the stand, onto the legs of the stand as well. They're all taped, taped from the back. I use like, you know, I um, you know, uh, duct tape, you know, just yeah. on the back. I, t I tape it really good so it won't fall off. And then I've had the wind blow it over and then I have to like, I tape it down or I've used the little sandbag thing. It's like black, you can buy them like at a like B, yeah. B and H photo, you know, uh, and or rocks. Some, Cause I kind of want to hide the stand a little bit and I have to put a lot of light in front of the and so you don't see the stand so much, you know. Thank you. In the background. And it's black, so too. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody else have any questions? Well, Christina, like I said, it is it's a fantastic creation. It was a pleasure, such a pleasure for me personally to actually see, you know, something like I've said that you've you've done and then transition it into something brand new. So um, especially the location you're using and the, uh, uh, just, just fast, fantastic. It's, it's really a, a great, great new, uh, new way of you creating and, and look forward to seeing more. So thank you. You're welcome. And let me, I'll share in the chat. Like I have my Instagram. Um, yeah, exactly. I have, like, Please do. Yeah. I have 
my um also my um facebook one as well i'll put that in the chat all right well thank you so much i appreciate it you're welcome